Awesome. So, hi, how are you guys doing today? Good. 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 How are you? Doing all right. How many interviews have you already sat through? Oh, we've done a few. A few. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. Let's count. <laughs> yeah, doing a so I wanted to start with just a real basic question. Uh, what is the appeal of a haunted house to you? Um, all your professional work, at least that I've researched, um, has been around discovering the existence of the supernatural. So why why are you so interested in finding this and, and being able to prove this? Um, for me, for me, it goes way back. Uh, I grew up listening to ghost stories. Uh, my grandfather was a treasure hunter, actually. They believe that... Uh, there are a lot of villages in Mexico that uh, were hunted because they had a treasure and their ghost was attached to their treasure. So that was his general belief. And I grew up listening to all his adventures that were fascinating. Um, then my parents, you know, they both uh, grew up and claimed to have lived in haunted houses. And I grew up listening to their stories. Every family gathering, all the siblings would get together and compare stories. And I can tell also the weight it had on them psychologically. And that was very fascinating to me. Uh, I grew up kind of skeptical um, because I never experienced anything on my own. Of course, like most of the people that are skeptics, like, I don't know, never experienced anything until I had an experience with my father after he passed away. And that changed the game for me. So my main motivation doing this is because I think dearly, I think about what my parents went through. And back in the day, this topic was very taboo still. Many people didn't believe in, in, in ghost stories, you know? And, uh, and now if I'm able to capture this on video, if I'm able to take it beyond just a personal ghost story, then I feel like that gives a lot of validation to whoever had that experience and also helps other people to come forward and talk about it, talk about their experiences without being so afraid of uh, judging, judgment. Now, um, you know, one of the things that I noticed about the film when I was watching it was how little um, emphasis you place um, at the beginning of the film on the history of the house. Um, mm -hmm. There seems to be a, an underlying assumption that the audience watching the film is already um, pretty intimately familiar. <laughs> With, uh, with, with the uh, stories behind The Conjuring and behind the house itself. And so I wanted to know um, what research did you do um, prior to and, and, and what went into the decision-making process um, to kind of uh, lay back on the history in order to focus on the actual experience of, of moving into the house for a couple of weeks? Yeah, so, um, I mean, this whole thing started uh, when we're uh, in COVID during the pandemic and, um, we were basically talking to our friends, Brian and Rochelle, and uh, Brian's like, hey, how would you like to go and stay and hang out with us at the Conjuring home? And we were like, that's my favorite movie. Vera's like ready to go and excited about adventure. And, uh, you know, really, it just was just happened. It was a phone call. We jumped in the car, uh, packed it up with all our camera gear, all our camera gear. Like, I don't travel uh, light. I mean, I, I have a lot of cameras yeah. and, and, you know, it, it basically was like, I don't know if this has ever been done before where literally get a call and you're just two weeks later, you're jumping in the car with your cameras and you're just documenting everything. So like it, it wasn't pre-production, you know, we were looking to do a documentary. It was mo mostly like, let's just see where this takes us and see how this, this works out. And, you know, as far as the history uh, Vera and I wanted to go into the place and not do a lot of research because we didn't want to uh, be influenced in any way of past investigators experiences with the possible history that happened at the place. We just wanted to document ourselves, our friends, the homeowners, and just what was happening in the moment. Also, we confirmed with the uh, the homeowners that, in yes, indeed, there's a lot of misinformation. So this documentary wasn't about set things straight or, or really tell who's wrong, who's right. It was more about just a new chapter of this famous location with the new homeowners. They have only owned it for two years and they had already been experiencing things and they're paranormal investigators themselves. So that's why we decided let's just focus on the now, the present as it is right now with all these new people and then take it from there. So you were, you were saying, Kendall, that um, you just... Uh essentially got the invitation um, from Brian and Rochelle, decided to jump in the car and head on out. You, uh, you were just going to document and see what happens. When did you know you had a movie? Uh, we knew 
we knew we were like doing something different going into it. So it was worth like putting in everything into it, you know? So we knew right away that this was, you know, it's the conjuring home. It's like, we're like this, you know, this could be something. The first night at the house, uh, after going into the house and seeing the look and like, just seeing what, you know, the, meeting Jen and Corey, they're just amazing people doing their interview. It started just unfolding and it, it was probably the first day that it was like, okay, we're, we're, you know, I'm glad I brought all these cameras. This is something. Yeah. That was actually one of the things I enjoyed most about the film was the rapport between everybody. Uh, you know, you, yeah. all, uh, you all are very open people. And, and so that, that came through really nicely. So uh, and it kept the through line moving along. Thank you. At the end of the film, um, you uh, each had brought home a souvenir and, um, and you had claimed that there was some sort of uh, a sense that, that part of the house had kind of followed you. So I just wanted to know, are you still experiencing anything? Is there, uh, did, did that kind of phase out or, or is that something that you're still kind of just like uh, dealing with in some way? What, what, what's the story with that? It took about, I'm going to say three months after we came home to just to be able to sleep, number one. Uh, the nightmares continued for a long time. We were experiencing really weird stuff, really weird stuff. There was one time we didn't document it because it happened, but we were in our bedroom and it felt like the whole room shook and woke us up. The whole bed started And shaking. it woke up our our, our kiddo and, and Vera and I all at the same time. We're like, what's going on? We're confused, on? like what's happening? You know, it was just, oh, it that's was, one of many. Of course, we didn't record it because we don't have cameras. Yeah, we don't sleep with cameras. But, uh, in the, bedroom, but. the strange thing is when we start talking to the other people, Brian, Rochelle, and then the homeowners, and we start telling them, well, this is happening. And sure enough, it's also happening you know happening to happening them, to them. Yeah. and and we knew we had to document it we going in Vera and I have done a lot of locations before and 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 we've experienced some of this in the past with our with you know some cases that we've done and this one you know we had talked about it before like if, happens again if it happens again we need to document we need to document it and it, that was the hardest decision was to document that at the mm -hmm. end so it's very personal yeah, yeah too personal so i i kind of want to know like what kind of nightmares were you having were they just like general run-of-the-mill nightmares were they specific to the house were they uh... yeah yeah i was back at the house it was all of them was back at the house most of most of them uh in the basement just in the basement in all the senses imagine just like one of those really vivid dreams where you don't even you can't even tell if it's a dream or if it's reality kind of like that and um just people you know being chased being harassed being uh like things being thrown at you like uh i don't even know how to explain it just kind of tormenting really yeah. and, and for me <laughs> i I, I was just drawn to the house. I wanted to go back. I was obsessed. like, I just wanted to go back. I ha I was making up like, sh I was like, oh, we need another drone shot. We need to get another interview. We need like, I was like making up reasons <laughs> to go back to the house to film. <laughs> it was, it was like, you know, it, it was just, it, it, yeah. Like we stayed there for the two weeks and I, I really feel like we, we bonded with with the experience and the house and the Heinz Inns and the whole thing I mean it was just it was it was a really eye-opening experience you know and and having that it it definitely it definitely plays on you you definitely feel well I, the was, draw. I was nervous because he did feel like he got touched in in the basement and for him it was like a an amazed you know it was like a loving experience all of us are watching him like uh you know you're kind of crazy he's like i love this they're, they're it wasn't in touched. the film but no it didn't make the film yeah. we cut all personal experiences question. out what got cut? what's that <laughs> that was actually one of my questions what got cut <laughs> everything personal every any, any personal experience with the cited uh, any personal experience that wasn't backed up with, with physical, physical evidence evidence yeah got it that, yeah that's awesome. our whole thing we got to capture it if we don't capture it it doesn't exist and that's why we're on brian and rochelle 24 7 hold that keep sleep with that gopro if it doesn't happen it's or if you don't get it on camera yeah. it's not anything and that's why we want to show the evidence and that's where this movie is is so important for us to show what we found and our experience and you know we we did the 
the process of, of elimination. I mean, any kind of personal experience, I, I got touched. It was amazing. I mean, I've never had that happen before. I've been to many, many locations and just never anything like that ever, not even close. And there it was very kind of loving and, and it lasted for like 20 seconds. It was, it was very right on the arm. It was, it was, it was fascinating. It was fascinating. Apparently we found out that's one of the claims. Yeah. The yeah. They told us that for males, for males. Yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. Cause you know, it, it's so, it's so interesting to me because I was watching, um, I was, I'd go through, I was going through your IMDB and my research for the interview. And I saw that you had uh, started work on season seven of ghost hunters as a cinematographer. And so I went season to, two, yeah. So I went back and watched, um, one of the episodes that they'd mentioned. And the one I watched was, uh, in Kentucky at a, um, distillery. And the, oh, yeah. one of the hosts, I don't know if it was Grant or the other guy, but one of the hosts had gotten goosed by a... Uh, by a <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know, you bring, I was uh, following him. immediately called that back. And I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. I mean, no, I've, I've, I've been in the room. I've been right there filming them when this stuff is happening. It's being captured. It's a personal experience. Sometimes... You know, you see the, the 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 movement or whatever. There's there's evidence that it's it's happening to the people. But like when I had my experience, like many investigators that I've followed, you know, I was hoping for you'd see the impression on the 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 sleeve or you'd see something. But we didn't capture that, so it didn't get used. You know, um, out of all of your experiences, you you've been investigated you know, investigators for quite a while now out of all of your experiences, how does this experience rank with, uh, with what you've done? Ooh. Different level, like diff totally different level. I, you know, immersing ourselves like this deep for this long, uh, I've just never done anything like that. Um, and it was, it was eye opening. Uh, I personally absolutely loved it. Cause it, it, it gave me a lot of validation from many years of research and filming and Absolutely. everything. It was, it was very emotional for me. Uh, especially like I said, you know, I, I remember my parents talking about this and now I was living in the shoes of a homeowner of a haunted home. And I, now I can share in the experience, whatever they're saying, their experience. And now I'm experiencing that with them. So just that along is just to be able to experience that with, the, 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 I, I don't want to call them a victim because they're not victims, but the owners of mm -hmm. a haunted location yeah. to have validation. I mean, that was huge for me. And as far as scare factor, who? I mean, I don't know, 10 out of 10. That was pretty, it's pretty scary for me to be there for sure. <laughs>